Hey guys, I got a question for you. Do you know what a king is? Now, they're usually someone who wears a crown, who has a fancy robe, and is usually carrying some kind of scepter or something, right? See, but what I was thinking is, what does a good king look like? See, a good king, he cares about their people. They lead, they guide, and they protect their people. And also, kings are sovereign. See, sovereign means having complete power and authority over someone or something. Now, if you can think of anyone who has complete control, power, and authority over you, who would it be? That's right, it's God. See, God has complete control over our lives and has a plan and a purpose for everything in our lives. And you know what? It's always better than we could have ever planned because he's good. So today, we're talking about how God is sovereign. <laughs> That's incredible, right? And the Bible shows us how God is sovereign through the story of David. See, last week, we talked about how God was victorious over the giant Philistine warrior Goliath, and he used David who was just a boy at the time, to kill Goliath with a simple sling and a stone. That boy would one day become the king of Israel. And God worked through David's life to show how that his plans are always fulfilled because God is sovereign. Now as a young boy, Samuel anointed David with oil to show that God had chosen him to be the king of Israel. And when Samuel anointed David, the Holy Spirit came on him. But at the time, there was already another king, and his name was Saul. So David had to wait to become king. Even when Saul died, David still wasn't allowed to be king. And one of Saul's sons thought that he should be king. Now David chose to trust that God's plan would not fail and God had chosen him to be Israel's king. So in God's time, he would become Israel's king. Now David knew that God is sovereign. So while he waited for God's plan to happen, David took his family to a place named Hebron. Now let's read our Bibles and open to 2 Samuel 2.4. And it reads, There the rulers of Judah anointed David king over the tribe of Judah. Now to anoint something means to pour oil on it. And if you remember, David was anointed king as a boy. So when he was anointed at Hebron, this was the second time he had been anointed as king. But still, he hadn't become king yet. Now as David waited, war broke out within the country over who would be the next king of Israel. After seven years, the people of Israel finally decided they wanted David to be their king. And all the elders of the tribe of Israel came to David in Hebron and anointed him as king. So now open to 2 Samuel 5.3. And it reads, When all the elders of Israel had come to King David at Hebron, the king made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. So wait, pop quiz. Up to this point, how many times has David been, to, been anointed king? That's right, it's three times. About 15 years have passed from the first time David was anointed, which was when he was a boy before he slayed Goliath, to the last time where we are now. Here's the thing though, God could have made David the king sooner because he's God and he is sovereign, but God knew exactly the right time for David to become king. Now as king, David put God first. So he decided to go get the Ark of the Covenant that was taken by the Philistines. You might remember that the Ark of the Covenant was a gold-covered wooden chest that held the Ten Commandments. But it was no ordinary box. It was the place where God met with his people. It represented God's presence and blessing. So when David had the chance to bring the Ark to Jerusalem, the people were overjoyed. And as they traveled back to Jerusalem, 
the people worshipped the Lord with trumpets. They were shouting, dancing, and they did sacrifices unto the Lord. See, this was so important because it meant to the people of Israel that God's presence was back with them. Now let's see what happened when David and his men arrived to Jerusalem with the ark. And it reads in 2 Samuel 6, 14. Wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might. Now, an ephod was a kind of apron men would wear over their clothes. And in fact, David danced and leaped before the Lord. David showed the people how to worship God freely and with a joyful heart. And God had made David king just as he had promised. God had won battles for David against his enemies. God had also brought back the Ark of the Covenant to Israel. David was so overjoyed by what God had done for him throughout his life that he wanted to build a temple to honor God. But this wasn't God's plan for David. Instead, God made a covenant with David. Now, what's a covenant, you ask? A covenant is a special kind of promise. And when God makes a promise, he keeps it. God promised that David's family line would last forever. Let's turn to 2 Samuel 7:16. And it says, God said, Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me, and your throne will be established forever. So God told David that his family and children would live forever on. So how do you think? David's family line would last forever. What do you think that king would be? And that's right, it was Jesus Christ. See, Jesus came from the family line of King David. David's family line will last forever because Jesus reigns king forever. And what does that show us about God? That God's plans always come true. He keeps all his promises because you see, God is sovereign. Every part of the big God story points to Jesus. And Jesus chose to come to earth and die on the cross for our sins so we can be forgiven and live forever with Him. This was all a part of God's plan and His promise to David. And we can trust God because He is faithful to keep His promises to us, just as He was faithful to keep His promises to make David king and to send a savior through David's family. David's life gives us an example of God's goodness and his sovereignty. And we can trust God because we know he loves us, he keeps his promises, and he is sovereign. God often chooses to do things differently than we would have done them. But no matter what happens, in all things, we can trust that God is sovereign. He has a good plan and He loves us. As we trust Him, He will finish His good plan for us. Now at this time, parents, we're gonna have some questions on the screen. I'd like you to lead your family in this discussion with these questions. And I'm excited for what you guys have to share with each other. So let's pray before we go. Father, thank you for this day. Lord, we love you. And Lord, we just thank you that you are sovereign. And Lord, we ask that you bless our conversation and the rest of this day in Jesus' name, amen.